What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report or review, I would say, because we're going to be talking about um, Kenobi, Obi Wan Kenobi, the show that you and I, Brian, have been looking forward to seeing for quite some time. And um, I want to hear your thoughts um, about what you thought of, of this show. I have my thoughts on it, and I've spoken to other people about it. And they seem to have loved this show. Um, they're starting to talk about the possibilities of a season two, Brian. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, um, but, uh, what did you think about this for that? Did they land a plane, Brian? Yes and no. I mean, I think, I think I, I told you this, this series over the course of the episodes to me had a consistent inconsistency. That, that's the way I would describe it. I think this show did an excellent job of creating drama out of things that you, where you already knew the ending, right? You already yeah. know, right? So every time like Leia's in jeopardy, you're like, well, I know Leia survives. Like, <laughs> right? Like, so almost all of the situations in this series, there was little doubt as to the life and death outcome of the character because you already know the future. Exactly. So I thought the show did a pretty good job of like creating tension, even that, yes. so that was the case. But like, I always felt like every episode I was in it. I was fixated, I was focused, I was feeling like some emotion, but it was up and down. I think the storytelling was very inconsistent. We'll talk about some of the details of that. I think there were some very unfortunate choices um, and things I would have liked to see done different. And ultimately I was left with like, I'm, I'm glad the show exists. Yes. I enjoyed it. Yes. And I don't really need a season two. And I reiterate my expectation that Andor is going to be better than this. That's, but it's a good, it's, a, it's an enjoyable, like, like if you're a star, if you know Star Wars and you haven't seen it yet, you got to see it. There's, there's stuff in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good watch. Definitely, Very good. Definitely. 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 Don't expect New Hope Empire level storytelling because it's not that. Yeah. Brian, you stated with regards to some of the moments where you know already what's going to happen. Um, spoiler alert, this is a spoiler review. Um, it, I was upset every time they switched over to Reva going after Luke. Yeah, I was. We'll, I was like, "We'll talk about that." That's. But they they had some. This series has some wonderful scenes. When you see Vader obsessing, when he power walked to um, Reva because they had captured Kenobi. I had never seen Vader walk that fast. And then he stops a, 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 a ship from flying. Yo, I had seen, this is like OP. This is stuff you see in comic books. Those things for me were great. And then you see Veda when Reva start. I mean, Reva making noise and <laughs> turning on her lightsaber. Like, okay, Veda's not going to hear that. And then he went to start doing some Kung Fu moves, like, touch, you know, he was like, <laughs> those were dope. That was you dope to me. Although, you know what I kept thinking of? It's like the YouTube footage of, like, MJ or LeBron at the kids' camps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're playing one-on-one -on -one with the kids, and the kids, are, <laughs> the kids are doing all these moves, and they're just standing there with the hand out, and it's like, and anytime just, they want, the shots go to the third row. It was, it was Pai Mei again. It was Pai Mei. Pai Mei. <laughs> if y'all know if, who I'm talking about, let me know in the comment section below. Hi, May. Anyway, um, Brian, some of the things that we had complained about before were they delivered in the spice was between Vader and um, Kenobi. Um, they definitely improved upon that. Mm -hmm. Um, all in all, Brian, you're right. 
there was inconsistencies in the stuff that they did well. They did very well. I, I wasn't mad that I, I, I saw this sh uh, show. I What I liked about this um, series the most is what I originally intended to go into this uh, show to watch was to see what Kenobi had to go through in order to um, conceal the secret and to look after Luke. And um, we were welcomed with a surprise with Leia because we had no idea. I'm pretty sure when they when they showed Alderaan and, and they showed them put um, Leia putting on her clothes, everybody was like, oh, snap, this is dope. Everybody put, had a smile on their face. Yeah. And I like the way they did that. Ern McGregor was fantastic, um, as always. There's certain things inconsistencies that you know if you if you've listened to our previous shows regarding the show um that we didn't like um and 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 it went all the way up until the end of this this series but again i wasn't uh mad that i saw it but certainly do not need to see a uh, season two of this for what what for it's you know this is something that you just keep it contained and then we move on we don't need to see what happens next um brian any what, what were some of the things that you really didn't like in the series or, or some of the things that you that um stood out as to why did they do this what else did you want to see uh so let, i guess let, let's talk about the, the resolution of the reva character and with the disclaimer that none of this is about Moses Ingram or betrayal or her ethnicity. Because I actually yeah. think she did an excellent job with what she was given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like what she was given, and, and I'll make yeah, the yeah. case. So, weirdly, I actually think when I step back and think about the show, Reva's character journey is actually kind of the main one. It's the main dynamic character of the show, which is really weird to say because you have Ewan McGregor standing right there. Yeah. And yet I kind of feel like the, the ride was more of a Reva ride, right? We start out with her as this ferocious, rising, hungry inquisitor who wants to be Vader's apprentice. And then we find out, no, she's actually a youngling at heart, bitter at Anakin. And, and just buying her time. Yeah. And then she finds redemption at in, on Tatooine in sparing Luke. Like, so ignoring the execution, that is a lot for a, a character in a show. That is the kind of journey that a trilogy of movies would explore. I would submit to you that if they wanted to, now, I think it strains believability, a lot of this, but like, if they wanted to have that kind of character, a character who was at the scene of Order 66 as a child, traumatized by that, who grew up a certain kind of way, and then wound up wanting to seek revenge, like wanting, want, wanted to learn the ways of the Force to seek revenge on the person who, if you wanted to do that, which is kind of very samurai, by the way, yeah. Um, that's its own show. Yeah, its yeah, yeah. Own movie. I actually think it hurt this series in the sense that it was like too much content, and weirdly, it left you and McGregor with not a lot of development. Like, how is he really different at the end of the show than the beginning? Okay, he remembers how to use his lightsaber. He remembers how to use the Force, and he can now talk to Qui Gon. Spoiler alert! But yeah. which is whack, by the way. Do we really feel like, like in episode two, when he finds out Vader's alive and you see that look on his face and that emotion, you're like, wait, I'm going to get four episodes of unpacking that face. And he kind of did it. Like, he just kind of left that and he kind of went on these little side journeys and then he fought Vader at the end and he, and there's a, you know, a big emotional moment where the, you know, which I thought was great, legitimately, where they reveal Hayden Christensen's face. Oh, that was dope. 
yeah. which was taken straight out of the animated. I told you they did that with a, a duel with Ahsoka in um, at one point. It, it's yes. the same thing. It was awesome. But like, I felt like Reva's emotional journey was kind of crowding Obi Wan's emotional journey, and I almost felt like they'd have been better. Like, there, there's something in the Reva character that's interesting. It should have been its own like Star Wars thing, and like Obi Wan should have gotten. I feel like more of that ups and downs and like what was going on in his head in the 10 years since we saw him where was he at now you know what was he really feeling with regard to like knowing anakin was alive and there's just a lot of things there that they just kind of left on the table like you got this beloved actor who's back to play this part it's like being overshadowed someone yes yeah like it was weird so that's why i'd say it's not about moses ingram like she took the script and she went out and executed it and gave you like a character that was dramatic, but it was like very like like the show, very up and down, very incomplete. And you're kind of just like, I don't totally buy that. Like, you're a youngling. You're still first off. If you're a youngling at heart, and Vader knew all along that you were a plant inside the Inquisitors, a how many people died on your watch mm -hmm. while you were like waiting for your one moment to strike? So that's a major problem if you're an actual Jedi at heart. And like, is Vader going to let you like hang around for like your entire life? And then why did he let you live? Weird. That's weird. Like why? Like, and by the way, if he was face to face with you with the force sensitive stuff, he remember that, mm -hmm. by the way, from when you were a kid, like, all of that was like complete, like, I don't, I don't buy it. Like, I don't buy that this is possible. And then like her big redemption is like, she lets Luke live. And I'm like, I don't think you earned that. Like for all the people you let die in your life, sparing this one boy, however important he may be, I don't think it brings you back to where Obi Wan's like, now you're free, free. Yeah. How are you free? Like you're gonna yeah. be on the run from every every dark agent. And by the way, Vader's still out there. Yeah, because Obi Wan let him live again. Yeah. Like I just was like, I felt sorry for for Ingram because I'm like, she's she's trying to build this up and it's like this thing is just kind of the, the part is just shaky underneath their feet brian do you think anyone would have gotten heat for that role meaning let's say it wasn't her let's say it was someone else in that doing the same thing you think this would still would have been a problem for you. Yes, the the role it's the it's the writing and the choices given to the character it has nothing. Like I said, like you can put whoever you want, any gender, any color, it doesn't matter. The flaws would remain the same, and my my base struggle would be it just it's it's too much, and it's too much alongside. Obi Wan to the point of it felt like it was crowding that story, and we saw this with Boba Fett weirdly, right? Where it's like yeah. Boba Fett started to become like a bystander in his own show to the point where he wasn't even in the episode. Now Obi Wan wasn't quite to that point, but like yeah. at least with Boba Fett, I could say he was a bit part of the original movies. Like mm -hmm. Obi Wan's a central character, both in the animated shows and in the films, like. You have no excuse for not making him like priority one, two, and three of this series. And I, I blew me away that at the end of the yeah. series, I was like, yeah, he kind of was like a facilitator a lot of the time. Yeah. I was not always the centerpiece. So that was my he number was one. He was a jobber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. A little <laughs> bit. Like that was, yeah. So um, that was part of you know what you, you know what character I enjoyed the most and she didn't have and she was only in a couple of episodes. The one who who who, who uh, sacrificed herself. Oh, Tal uh, Talon or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, Dear Burma. Yeah, she's great. They, Brian, would you would would you have been excited, or at least anticipating something in the future where this dude fathered a child because him reaching out to Qui Gon wasn't working. He was calling on calling for him, master, master, and in a moment of need. He had this woman whom there seemed to be some sort of connection. They could have gone a route there that led us towards the future. But and you it, know, in a, weird, in, in a way, part of why that character, the part of why that character worked so well, is because it was new. 
So therefore, <laughs> that character had stakes, and she ultimately did die. But like, you would watch her go through, you know, like, I don't know, is she going to make it? Is she not? Because she's not part of the future. <laughs> so we don't totally know if she made So that's part of why, and I think that's actually one thing that I bet anything Andor will get this right, because Tony Gilroy is one of the five best screenwriters of our lifetime, is that like, part of what I think is going to really work in that show is that even though you know Andor himself is going to die in Rogue One, mm -hmm. every other character is going to be new. So you're not going to have that like predetermination. So all the yeah. stakes in each episode can be higher because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that, that was my thing. I did want to highlight though, I thought the duel was really good. I got to admit, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it at the end. They brought like, it. The, using, using the force the way they did in that fight was worth seeing. I was like, that's a, we haven't seen a Jedi fight where they've really gone all out that way. And I, I, was, I saw that twice. I was, I was like, I felt, I was like, all right, you guys, you guys did understand the complaints of the priors and gave us something that was pretty darn compelling start to finish. So, but you know, I think being that this was already shot and, and I think there were, they did this on purpose. They did it. The, they, the, 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 the sword fighting in the beginning was lackluster and they were waiting for that moment where, you know, Darth Vader essentially the first time was just playing with him. Yeah. Right. And he was forced to be better because Obi-Wan was better. He started to understand or, 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 or get his mojo back, so to speak. Well, I think it also, like, I, I enjoyed the flashback scene. I actually wish there had been a few more. Um, I thought there would be a few more. But the flashback yeah. scene was really important, right? Because that flashback duel underscored that Vader from start to finish does have a weakness, which is he's pretty overconfident like he's always yeah. going for the kill yeah, he yeah. always thinks he's gonna get it and like you see it in new hope right the second he starts dueling oh well your powers are weak old man he's already <laughs> like i got <laughs> he's playing around with luke and empire he's playing around with luke and Empire. it's only in return of the jedi where like luke is stronger than him that he's on the defensive so and not saying I nothing kind of nice that they flash back and they're like even when they were practicing hayden christmas did every, anakin every time was like i got you i got you and he he gets he gets yeah, yeah, yeah. cheated out of victory because he's overconfident. So I kind of like that that was a, a recurring theme. But um, so can I ask you when Obi Wan was under the rubble, did you feel that that was the moment that Qui Gon Qui Gon was going to speak to him? So I'm going to say no. Uh, and the reason I'm going to say no is because it would have been a huge violation of canon if he had. Because remember, in Empire, when Luke is rushing off, Obi Wan says, "If you choose to face Vader, you'll do it alone. I cannot interfere." So if they had had Qui Gon interfere on Obi Wan's behalf, got it. I would have been like, "You mother effer! You wouldn't interfere for Luke in Empire against Vader after you're you were calling out to your guy and he helped you." There's no way they could have done that. So actually, I but, in, I, but I interfere how? But interfere how? He wasn't going to, perhaps. I mean, listen. How would he interfere? Just by his uh, presence or his uh, or telling him a few choice words? Yeah, or like yeah, suggesting a course of action, or you know, I guess weirdly, if we're following the canon of Last Jedi where Yoda appears, the force ghosts can actually like interact with the real world. Remember, cause like Yoda catches the lights. Remember he like catches that light. He like physically catches a, an object. Mm -hmm. So like in theory, he could help channel the force, do something with the force. But given that they've established those rules of like, you can't have that help. I would have been like, this is really hypocritical. If you yeah, I, I think, I think you could have, assisted that with a few words just a question like do you remember who you were or do anything just those words uttered in his mind or quiet on saying that to him would have been enough to i think spark that uh that that mojo back you know um i don't think it would have been interfering somewhat i mean it's just like you know 
Rocky, get up because Mickey loves you. You know, whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't in there fighting him. He's just so you, giving him a few words of inspiration. Invoke, that's, a, that's a Rocky Five <laughs> analogy. That's a violation. You can't invoke that. That's where he flashes to that. You can't do that. That's not allowed. That's not allowed. That movie didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying. No, you, what you're I, looking for is like in New Hope, where Obi-Wan talks to Luke and he's in the ship, right? Where he's like, use the force. And he tells him to turn off the computer. Like, that's what you're looking for, I think. Run, Luke. Run, exactly. That's it. That's all I was looking for. <laughs> that's all I needed. I think that would have been perfect, Brian. Okay. I just didn't like, and you know what? Speaking of canon, correct me if I'm wrong. There is an episode uh, in the cartoons, the animation uh, for Star Wars, where Qui-Gon can't appear to anyone because he didn't finish training um if any of you guys can out there can look that up because I, I i remember hearing that um it was done in one of those uh breakdowns from emergency awesome or new rock so i was one of those guys where he said he couldn't appear to him and and so when i saw this i was like oh snap they said forget what he said we're gonna yeah. do this i don't know so yeah. so yeah so that I was a little bit uh, turned off by that by that piece, but everything else I I, I, I like I agree with everything you said regarding um, uh, the character of Riva, um, but um, and I, I'm I'm pro I'm in the pro Leia camp. I think I think oh she was amazing. There's people, there's people out there that are like oh this this was a cheap way for them to get. I'm like she's great. she was amazing. I think she was amazing. I think she's young Carrie Fisher brought to life. And she was I amazing. The character was an ad. And to me, I think it gave me context for why she goes to him for help above all else in the beginning yes. of New Hope. And I was like, of course, I'm with that. I, so I, I felt like that choice was validated. I just, but I don't have a need. Like, they're like, we mapped this out as a trilogy of films. That's what the writer said. But I don't need to see two more seasons of this like i know we're not fully to like ben is in the desert you know leading up to new hope but like what are the gaps here that we need to fill i, I just man like if anything if you were gonna do another obi-wan season i'd be like go the other way like i don't see like him with duchess satine or like do, do something that like is from the animated world where he was not in this time period but like before you know i I don't know. I'm cool with them leaving this the way it was. Yeah, I mean, I can see some way of of of, of let's say, for example, um, Darth Vader at the end of the series was, you know, he, he the, the the Emperor already told him like, "Yo, what you doing here? Because you seem like you ain't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not you, you're not focused right now." And Darth Vader, what I, uh, you know, you're right, blah, blah, blah. So he's, he forget it about Kenobi, but it could be a season where on the side, on the hush, he's on the low, he's telling, you know, he's doing stuff to try to get at him again, but he never gets to, but I don't want to see that, right? It doesn't, it's just, cause this show works for me anyway, because of the Vader situation. Now, what more do we need to see for Kenobi to, um, I guess, believe that there is a new hope or what adventures does he get himself into that requires um, a less of a, because the biggest thing that he has to protect is that secret. What, we, what other adventures do I need to see him in that's just as big or even more? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I also think I know Hayden Christensen was kind of like, oh, I'd love to do a Darth Vader series. I'm not with that either. I don't think I think you're risking. Too, I think this show already was like, Vader did enough cool things that I was like, all right, it validated him being in here. There was drama between the two of them. Still, it almost it may it kind of reminded you that like that moment when they were face to face, and it's like half his face. Man, it's a shame they couldn't have been face to face more because th there's you feel it like when it's you and McGregor and Hayden Christensen head to head, like you do feel that, and it's a shame they couldn't oh, yeah. explore that deeper. But like 
Vader's like between Rogue One and like this, like Vader's done a lot of damage to where I'm kind of like, all right, he he, I don't need to see a series where he's like murdering thousands of people and like <laughs> annihilating planets. Like, forget it. Like, we we get that he's he's a bad dude, like, <laughs> and he's choking his own guys. Like, I get it. Like, we we've seen enough right now. I, Oh, you know, like man. I said, he's going to be in the Ahsoka series, but he's not going to be Vader. I don't think it's going to be more the flashback to Anakin and Ahsoka's relationship, which I think is cool. But yeah, a, a Vader. You think he's going to show up in, in Ahsoka? Well, it's confirmed he's in the series. The question okay. is, what is he doing in the series, Got given it. the timeline? So I'm best guess it will be flashbacks to when she's his Padawan. Uh, that would make the most, as opposed to like her fighting him as Vader. I don't think they're going to do that in that show. It doesn't make timeline doesn't make doesn't match up um but i don't need to see like eight episodes like i think if they do vader they run the risk it's going to be like boba fett where it's like you kind of get into it and you're like okay this dude's an iconic villain but like how do i build an emotional eight episodes around a guy who's now fully in the mask and like already done the obi-wan thing and i can't do the luke thing because that's in the mood like i think it's too hard I, would, I wouldn't do that it's too hard and you'd have to go you have to do something quite different. It can't be more of the same. Right. So what that different is, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but we just need to move on. I, I don't want to be stuck in the past anymore. I want to move on. So let's see what happens. Um, certainly, I mean, obviously, Mandalorian is, is it pretty much has nothing to do with that whole other stuff and yeah. perhaps is why we like we like it so much because that's a whole nother thing yeah um but um the future is what i'm looking forward to the most and let's see if we can get there let's see if we can get some news um anything else brian before we wrap up well i would just say like yeah like i said i this is you know it's easy to, it's i think on the one hand it's fair to hold the show to a very high standard because of who the characters are on the other hand it's like you know Star Wars ultimately is about entertainment. And so that's why I kind of feel like that's, it was very entertained, like at a lot of points in this series. So like, it's one of those where like, if you ask me like a rating, you know, I would still give it like, if it's on a five-star rating, I still give it at least like a three and a half, just because I feel like the high points were like really gripping. I mean, yeah, you yeah, really yeah. enjoy it. And they were worth yeah. waiting for. It's just, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like I said, it's not a perfect show. And, and I said, I, I, I wish the Reaver character had its own show. Yeah. to kind of try to flesh out what they were trying to do there. That would be my biggest, biggest change. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us in the comment section below what you guys thought of the Kenobi series and do you want a second season? The, does a second season make sense? And I wouldn't mind hearing a pitch from you guys. For you guys who want a second season, pitch me a second season. Yes, exactly. Let us know what you, what a se second season would look like. You know what's funny? I was watching um, over the weekend. Every once in a while, they put the, the Star Wars trilogy. And I'm always watching the parts with Darth Vader. And my favorite parts is, one of my favorite parts is when he says, apology accepted, Captain Vader. Captain Vader. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is, you know, the coldest. He kills him and he says, apology. <laughs> you so he, know, that he, is, has, <laughs> he has the coolest lines in the I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> the character was written so well in, in the original trilogy. Pray that I don't alter it further. Again, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yo, I mean, yo, you cling to whatever he's going to say, man. And that's why I was, I reiterate that they wasted these moments with him talking to Reva in the original in the, in the Kenobi series. I would have much rather him hear him speak the first time when he sees Kenobi or during that duel or when he asks, um, Kenobi asks, what are you? And and there you hear the first time he's um, Vader speaks, but they missed out. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's our show for today. That's our review. Um, you gave it a three and a half, right? Yeah. I say that I say three and a half too. Um, I, I I really enjoyed it. There's some parts there that just didn't work for me, but um, it's certainly a show for me. Anyway, I'll I'll would go back and rewatch some of the scenes because I thought they were that great. Great. Um, 
Yeah, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.